game should be called Lightning Returns to Test Your Patience. When I awoke from my dreamless sleep, I was just in time to witness the end of the world. Lightning's opening narration is so deadpan, I honestly think she's competing with me to see who can out monotone the other. The last game ended with Sarah dying and Valhalla merging with Pulse. And if that concept wasn't confusing enough, this game starts 500 years after that event with everyone now ageless and the world is days away from the apocalypse, which I thought happened at the end of the last game. And Lightning is apparently Jesus, here to save everyone's soul so they can be reborn on a new world being created by a god that was just introduced. Only 13 days to go. How did they ever arrive at that number, I wonder? Look. I know you don't want an M rating, and you want to titillate the teen demographic, but the only place I know of that has pole dancing without the stripping is Cirque du Soleil. Doesn't your impending death and the futility of a 500 year existence where no children can be bored just make you want to party? After two games full of Snow's relentless positivity, seeing him turn into a Kingdom Hearts villain fills me with so much Schadenfreude that it can only be expressed in German. Hey Snow, was geschieht mit Helden, die niemals einen Plan benötigen? Lightning saves this guard's soul, which is her job now as God's chosen savior. Don't worry, we'll be getting into that in just a bit. However, here she just forces the guy's soul out, yet for the rest of the game, she'll have to ease people's regrets in order to save their soul. Seeing the walls move is pretty normal at a rave. Don't know what everyone's problem is. Guys, we've created the most powerful and stoic heroine in Final Fantasy history. Now make that bitch pole dance and wear skimpy outfits. Legends had told of her coming. It can't be a legend if everyone who heard it is still alive. All of you have been alive for 500 years, and the story about the savior couldn't have been told until after the events of the last game. I can't tell if lightning and snow are fighting or if the camera is attached to an out of control drone and my eyes are playing tricks on me. Also, mm -hmm. Neither Snow nor Lightning, the two people that should instantly be taken back by Lumina's appearance, seem at all curious why she looks exactly like Sarah. You're not supposed to throw your life away. And to keep you from throwing your life away, I will try to kill you by dropping a chandelier on you. What? Makes sense to me. Does this remind you of anything? It's supposed to, but I'd forgive you for not caring enough to spot the reference. If I have to fight the savior, then I will. Uh, you just did. She kind of kicked your ass too. Tell me, Snow. Has ever a day passed? when you haven't thought about Sarah. Snow has refused to move on from Sarah's death for over 500 years. This series really wants us to believe that theirs was a romance without equal, but they never bothered to develop it any further than they were two people that loved each other enough to get engaged. Outside of some flashbacks on a beach, the end of the first game and a brief moment in 13-2, they've hardly had any scenes together. It took three games, but this one finally has a combat system that doesn't involve you hitting the auto battle button every fight. However, its biggest addition is just an excuse for lightning to cosplay. <laughs> No guards are even standing in that hallway to spot lightning. And they're just guards. We've seen lightning kill giant demons with ease already. She doesn't need to run away. She thinks she's going to save his soul? Would you listen to this nonsense? Ugh, God turns her into the savior and it all goes straight to her head. It needs pointing out that this series began with a group of people defying fate and robotic gods, then switched to time travel and paradoxes, and has now come around to messiah figures and religion. Normally when you create a trilogy, you start with a singular theme that spans across multiple stories. It's really only the presence of the returning cast that makes this a sequel at this point. I would be his servant, and if I succeeded in doing his bidding, my reward would be a miracle. He said she would live again. Sarah is not that great of a character, or at least not great enough that saving her needed to be Lightning's motivation twice. This is the second time that a god has held Sarah hostage to make Lightning do something. Here's a test. Figure out which Final Fantasy 13 game I'm talking about. Lightning's goal is to save her sister Sarah while defying the fate she was given by a god all before the world comes to an end. The answer is all of them! Does anyone else remember just how much Lightning was against doing what Barthandalus wanted in exchange for Sarah in the first game? She didn't trust him at all. What happened to that Lightning? Of course this place would be called the Ark. Don't try to impress us too much, game. I guess the Lightning X Hope shippers made their demands known to the devs after the last game where Hope grew up, and they preferred Kid Hope for their creepy, creepy fan art. Maybe that's how God wants it. Maybe emotions and his servants just distract us from what we're supposed to do. So he got rid of them for us. This game is three games too late in explaining why Lightning is dry as toast all the time. And this would only explain her limited emotional range in this game. I honestly can't spot a single difference between her now versus then. Maybe emotions and his servants just distract us from what we're supposed to do. It's kind of telling when even God thinks you're way too angsty for your own good. Five short centuries. That's what it took to destroy all of creation. Now there's barely anything left at all. And when the savior has used all her light, the bells will toll and the world will end. Is that what you told me? Yes, but when that time comes, Bunavelza will finally awaken and he'll bend his great will to create a new world. Did Bunavelza not explain anything to Lightning when he made her the savior? Because Hope is spending a lot of time getting her up to speed. The Ark is the remains of the artificial cocoon. Bunavelza has repurposed the world we built. This is where the souls of the saved are kept ready to be reborn in the new world. I could probably raise the IQ of this video by quoting Epicurus here, but I'd rather just point out that this is the anime version of Noah's Ark. I can only assume I was in the hands of God. 
I was part of his plan. So he took me and prepared me for the role that I had to play. This game feels like it was designed to trick weebs into attending church. If you did that, and the world ends before the 13th day, God will deem that you have failed. Then what will happen to your bargain? You know what would make Final Fantasy 13 even better? Time restrictions. Aradia is the key. You have to gather as much of it as you possibly can. And the way you do that is by saving people's souls. In other words, go do some fetch quests until the end of the world. Hey, God never said being the savior would be glamorous. The people seem to have regressed technologically since the last game. Since 500 years ago, humanity lived in a sci-fi city and even made a new cocoon. While this just looks like JRPG London. Game gives away potential plot well before it's needed by showing Vanilla Wake and is the Order's saint. And even gives away that she's friends with Lumina. People with pink hair are being murdered in Luxarian by a cult that wants to stop the savior. They apparently took the Terminator approach by murdering everyone with one matching characteristic. This was no accident. Hope can continues his tradition of pointing out the bleeding obvious. You mean people don't accidentally stab themselves in the back while pinning a note to themselves? Luxarian, the divine city of light. Is that what they call it? The trouble is, the brightest lights cast the darkest shadows. Move over, Darkwing Duck. Lightning is here to drop some commentary on good and evil. Gee, I wonder who that could be said every person who played this game and secretly hoped it wouldn't be Noel. This investigator lets Lightning conduct the investigation of the murder for him even though he doesn't know her and Lightning looks exactly like the murder victim. His name's Holmes. Subtle game. Very subtle. You see, it's the end of my shift and I'm waiting for my replacement, but he, he hasn't shown. Lightning has a limited time until the end of the world and she spends a good amount of it as a shift manager. The children of Etro meet in the graveyard every night to ritually kill pink-haired women. To get inside, they speak a passcode when the phone booth rings. The code changes every day, so they have to spend the day searching the city for codes left on walls. Yes, they write the passcode on walls one number at a time for their members or really anyone to find. This is Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life. This game is mixing its Christian ideology with Norse mythology. Right. Lightning puts her hand up to her ear because she can't hear Hope trying to speak. So you would expect to see an earpiece there. Yet her ear is empty. No, no, no. Hope can't hear you or see you. You're invisible. Do you know why? Because we're inside you. I'm not going to begin to question how that works. I'm just glad Lumina is a reprieve from the rest of the moody cast. She's the first character in this series that seems to be having fun. What the hell are you? We're just particles of dust. dust brushed brushed from, from the palm, palm of a god. god. That's all we ever were. That was... That was Sarah. Oh, now you see the resemblance only after she made it blatantly obvious. Noel displays his camera placement omniscience by always appearing just off to the side during wide shots. You know what this is, don't you? It's an oracle drive. It records the future. Oh, God damn it! Not this crap again. This is who's going to kill me. The Hunter. He has a name, and you know it. You were the one who started Noel on this path in the previous game. The oracle says Noel's going to kill me. You got it! But you know what? They're very impatient, these Etro lovers, so they've started the hunt without him. Anyone who looks like the savior is fair game. The children of Etro saw this prophecy of Noel killing lightning and believed Noel was saving the world by doing it. So they started trying to get ahead on the prophecy by killing pink-haired women, even though they know it has to happen like they saw in the prophecy for it to come true. Also, the prophecy shows exactly what lightning looks like, but they kill anyone with pink hair in case it just happens to be lightning. We don't make the prophecies. They are what they are and the future happens whether we want it to or not. You're going to try to destroy the world, and I'm going to stop you. You know that to be false. The future you came from doesn't even exist anymore because you changed the past. After spending way too much time searching for these numbers, Lightning speaks the correct code into the phone even though she has no idea what order the numbers should be spoken. She has come at last. It's the God Savior. See? You did know what Lightning looked like. I'm surprised you aren't more embarrassed about killing all those innocent women. But you are taking too long. So they panicked and started killing anyone who even looked like me! Yeah, then I shouldn't have waited, should I? I could have found you and saved their lives. No, you couldn't have. A prophecy has to happen at the specified time. You can't make it happen sooner. Show me the crest of Etro. You're letting her in just because she has the symbol of your cult? You guys have been killing anyone who even looked like lightning. Do you think he's still your friend? See, there's only one person Noel ever truly loved. And she's long gone. You would think that after 500 years, these characters would grow and develop. But every single one of them has the same motives and issues they originally had. Lightning wants to save her sister. Noel was still upset over Yule dying. Saws is again trying to save his son. Vanille feels guilty over her past actions, and Fang only cares about Vanille. It's kind of depressing when Snow is the only character that appears to have changed. We'll both be alive. In a new future. In a new world that I'm gonna make happen with my own two hands! Here we have two characters with the exact same motivation. The only difference is which girl they want to revive. Why didn't you do it? Because Yule, she wouldn't... This isn't what she would want. With all the reused character models, plot lines, and music, 
It's like I'm playing Final Fantasy 13 2 again. Have you ever come across a wounded animal on the road and felt like backing your car over it to put it out of its misery? This game really brings that feeling out in me. Does off hope. He does like to talk, that one. Lumina would be great at game sins. Long time no see, Vanille. <laughs> you look well. And you haven't changed. You're just as I remember. So does everyone else. No one ages anymore and your friends never bother changing clothes. Vanille can hear the cries of all those who died when chaos poured out of Valhalla and swallowed up the world. And she wants to set them free by offering them oblivion. Lumina is apparently good friends with Vanille. And yes, Vanille seems oblivious to Lumina's appearance as well. And Lumina knows the truth about what the Order plans to do with the gathered souls, but refrains from telling either Lightning or Vanille, even though if the Order goes through with its plans, Sarah's soul would be destroyed and Lumina is the one protecting Sarah's soul. Why is it so hard to get into Snow's palace now? Last time, Lightning just showed up. Now she has to take an unofficial tour of the Augur's quarters over the monorail, then has to blow up a statue during a play just so she can bridge the wall. With the time restrictions on quests, this game feels like it was designed to sell strategy guides. Some people do find the idea repulsive, so they grow and consume their own food, but they are a minority. Meaning most of the population don't care. They're happy to eat processed chaos. Chaos infused food? Well, that's certainly going to trigger all the anti GMO activists. He's pacing back and forth in that little room of his, waiting for the world to end. You know why, right? It's all because of you know who. She's the reason he's dead inside. Someone really should have downloaded Tinder onto Snow's phone for him at some point in the last 500 years. Here's a random boss fight. We were kind of light on those in the game. After this, you would think Lightning would stop playing nice with Lumina and attack her on sight. It looks quiet, but trust me. That wall is too well guarded to try and sneak over. Climbing over the wall would draw too much attention and get you shot, but toppling a statue with fireworks during a play and using that as a bridge won't? Just someone who wants tonight's show to go down in history. Doubling or tripling the fireworks should do the trick. I like your style, lady! This director is okay with lightning blowing up his set. Before you can continue with the quest, you have to collect enough fireworks from around town to blow up the statue. You will spend most of your time in this game doing collection quests like this, and the worst thing is the time restrictions. You can only buy the fireworks at a certain time. But who's going to replace her on such short notice? <laughs> You're looking at her. When you spend three games creating the coldest, most cynical heroine you can, you can't really use gags like this. Then you can stand on stage as the star of tonight's grand finale. Was this scene done by an outsourced studio? The humor is at odds with, well, everything. The tone, the characters, and even the setting. The director said he moved his people and the audience out of the danger zone. Yeah, when the statue starts collapsing, we see people almost being crushed. Isn't it kind of odd that this play is being held in honor of the savior, when the city has the guard on alert to capture or kill said savior? I'd begun to worry that you weren't the snow I once knew. But it looks like nothing will ever change you. Yeah, sorry about last time. I had to test you, though. Had to know you were the real Lightning. I see now that the devs didn't have the balls to stick with Snow's changing character. He was just faking it to make sure this was the real Lightning. Can't have any of that pesky character development happening. After all, this cast was perfect from the very beginning. How can there be this much chaos? It's pretty hard to swallow, huh? Worst thing is, it just keeps on growing. Square Enix is way too in love with nebulous clouds of darkness. You find it throughout the 13 series, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy XV, and other Final Fantasy games. No matter what you call it, an evil cloud is boring. I have no idea what its intentions are, if it's sentient, what it can do, and most of all, you can't relate to a miasma. When I destroy this last infusion, that'll be the end of me. I'll be out of power. It's Seath time. Shouldn't you have turned into a Seath a long time ago? Your new focus was to stand by Sarah's side and protect her, and we all know how that turned out. I'm tired of being useless. Well, at least he finally admitted it. A death that's no different than suicide! How can you face Sarah after that? You could probably change Snow's mind if you told him you were only days away from bringing Sarah back to life. Snow gets one weak Seath transformation so it can be more believable when he turns back to normal. Finally getting to kick Snow's ass is incredibly cathartic. You know nothing about Snow. That line is treading too close to meme country to be a coincidence. But she's not here. No matter how much we wish she was, and I can't be what she was. Snow, the only thing I can do is do what you asked of me. For someone who's not supposed to have emotions anymore, this is the most emotional I've ever seen Lightning. So you can just will yourself to be human again after a Seath transformation? This flies in the face of the first game that told us failing a focus meant becoming a monster. Hell, just Etro freeing Lightning and the others from Crystal was so extreme that it broke time and kicked off the events of the second game. The encounter is ordained. You have been led to the fountainhead. Once the chaos flows, here you will meet the servant of fate. Adorned with feathers of white. The Angel of Valhalla.
You could have just said that Lightning will find a white chocobo. The legends tell us that the chocobo's chosen master will be led by the chocobo to a certain place. Who starts a legend that someone will find a chocobo and that that chocobo will take them somewhere? Not exactly on par with Beware the Ides of March. Healing this chocobo will consume a good chunk of your playtime with fetch and item collection quests. Also, you can have it healthy enough to jump over some roofs to reach the path to the Temple of Etro. Lightning is a demigod who started this game jumping across buildings on her own. She doesn't need a bird. So, we meet again, Caius Ballad. It's been a while, woman who would be goddess. This game is giving Dragon Ball a run for its money when it comes to characters that won't stay dead. I thought you'd be dead by now. Ah, death, were it so. But they won't let me die. Caius has been made immortal twice now, using a different method for each instance. And both times he didn't ask for it. What are the odds? He suffers because of us. Savior. Can you save him? Some Yules don't want him to die, so they force him to keep on living. Others want to help him die, so that his soul can be saved. Long story short, Lightning fails to save Kai's soul because he doesn't want to, and half of the Yules don't want to let him go. This entire section is a huge waste of time. They push and pull, it's a mass of contradictions. That should be the tagline on the box art for this series. They've become one, a cancerous mass of sorrow and pain. Another great tagline. You need to know who we are what we are it was us we destroyed the world you're the source of the original chaos the chaos that burst from the unseen realm whoops must have slipped our mind to mention that little fact in the last game so this all began because you couldn't let go of caius that sounded pretty accusatory after all you are doing this because you can't let go of your sister so yule is never gonna let you go she is but a child and a child needs to be looked after, especially when she is doomed to stay alone in the chaos. Since you knew all of that beforehand, why did you destroy two worlds and time itself? Your whole plan was to free Yule from her curse and yourself from yours. I am an empty shell. My soul is rotted away. I shall cast this body into the chaos. I shall be the shepherd of all the souls. Caius is making my wrists want to cry. Now leave us, savior. Now leave me alone with my lolly harem. The white chocobo was Odin? How does that work exactly? If you want to know what we know about the clavis, you'll just have to join our gang. So you activate that monument? That's the theory, yeah. It's called a crux and supposed to fit right into the monument and switch it on somehow. But not just for anyone. According to all the tales, only those chosen by God can make them work. To join the bandits and learn about the location of the clavis, Lightning has to pass an initiation test by stopping a tornado, and is in fact the only person who can. Which makes me wonder why this guy gave her a test he didn't believe she could pass since no one else should be able to do it. And makes me wonder how anyone else ever got into this organization. Make it stop? The wind? Do you want a bandit or a holy woman? You are a holy woman. Hello? Servant of God? Savior of man's souls? But I'm glad to see you're still the same. You know. Bland, boring, emotionless, angsty, repetitive. It's Vanille who needs it. For some reason, when we woke up from the crystal, she picked up some strange new ability. Now she hears the voices of the dead. For those keeping tabs, this game made Hope a kid again, Lightning into the Messiah, and Vanille can commune with the dead. And all three of these changes are explained with, they just woke up like that. Must have been God. So the Order plans to gather all the souls of the dead? Why? You ought to know. You're here under their orders, aren't you? Fang wants to destroy the Clavis to prevent the Order from getting it and forcing Vanille to use it, which will kill her. And Lightning is technically on the same team as the Order since they both serve Bunavelza. So why is Fang trusting her so much right now? This isn't that long of an RPG, so to pad the length, let's force the player into finding three different murals to open the door to the Clavis. But to activate the murals, you have to leave the ruins. Find three shrines that contain artifacts that power the murals. But to activate the shrines, you need three cruxes to act as keys. This is pretty much all the lore you get for the series. After hundreds more years in Crystal, we wake up again. And for what? So Vanille can go mad listening to the cries of the dead? Shouldn't Fang and Vanille have a new focus since they woke up from their crystal slumber a few years ago? That's how this works. You complete one focus, then turn into crystal until you are given another. You might as well play the Ark of the Covenant tune from Raiders if you're going to be this blatant. That artifact is definitely emitting powerful energy. You don't have an earpiece. Stop putting your hand up to your ear when Hope talks to you. I'm not letting anyone else have it. If Vanille uses this damn thing, she'll die! Fang could have explained that to Lightning when she asked for help searching for the Clavis. After all, she already trusted Lightning enough to join her in the search. They took the Clavis. How did they sneak it past you? Yeah, you were fighting their monster, but it's not that big of a room that you wouldn't notice people carrying a glowing golden arc right past you. Won't open! They must have sealed it! That door opens only for the one who collected the crux from the murals, so the Order Soldiers being able to close it ignores the game's not even five minute old logic. And you didn't want to let her die like that. 
So you tried to get the clavis yourself. What exactly do you think you're saving Vanille from? The world will end on the same day she uses the clavis to destroy all the souls of the dead. Whether you stop her from doing that or not, she still ends up dead. I had to wait forever to tip those guys off. You? You're the one who led the Secutors to us? Exactly. And without hope even noticing a thing. Now the Order has their little clavis and they're beating a trail back to Luxarian. Lumina keeps acting like a villain. Yet those actions are opposed to her actual goal. Saving Sarah and reuniting herself with Lightning. I guess the devs figured that once you got to the end of the game, you would have forgotten how Lumina was shooting herself in the foot over and over throughout the entire game. I know I did. I save souls by granting them what they wish for. If Vanille wishes for death with all her heart, then I have to let her have it. I recall Snow asking you to kill him not so long ago, and then you refusing that wish and pleading for him to return to being human. Dot, is he asleep? Yeah, he's been like that for centuries. Silent as death. Ever since the chaos came and destroyed everything. His body's still alive, but his soul... It's not in there. Saws, who was sidelined to DLC in the previous game, has the same character motivation that he had in the first, saving his son who was asleep. I'm not sure what's worse at this point, being a comic relief black character, being a DLC character, or just repeating his character arc again. It's a coffer of souls. If I can collect enough soul fragments, Dodge will wake up. To wake up Dodge, Saws has to find the pieces of Dodge's soul, and he's been looking for those for over 500 years without finding a single one. Lightning, of course, will find all five of them in one day. One fragment was even right outside Saws's house, another was with Chocolina, the chocobo that lived in his afro, and a third one was with Mog, who lived in a forest not far from Saws. Finding the soul fragments is one long, annoying fetch quest, and getting one of the fragments is in fact another fetch quest that requires you to get two other items to exchange for the fragment. His soul is reborn, but his heart shut away tight. Little Dodge is frightened and doesn't want to come out. It's your scary face. You should see yourself. You're scowling all the time. Like you want to scream at someone. So you're telling me Dodge's soul split into pieces because Saws was unhappy and not smiling after the world fell apart? Am I hearing that right? This kid put his dad through five centuries of hell because he was grumpy? And blast off! Whoa, Chocobo and Airship are neck and neck. Who's gonna crack first? I'm Saz Catroy bringing you the race of the century together with Supersonic Dodge. Hey, Dodge, you awake? I'm beginning to feel the developers of this game do not like Saz. I kind of feel sorry for him. I mean, I don't like any of the characters in this game, but even he doesn't deserve this. After 500 years of being comatose, Dodge's body would be atrophied all to hell. There's a huge elephant that needs to be addressed. All of the people stopped aging once Valhalla merged with Pulse, including the children. Yet the children still act like kids in spite of the 500 years of life experience they have. This Sarah that keeps appearing to encourage Lightning to continue her task is a fake. It's just Boon of Elza, meaning the Final Fantasy 13 series is 3 for 3 in the guys disguising themselves as a girl to trick someone category. I think that makes it a fetish. Sid Reigns. That was once a man's name, but now it means nothing. His soul has dissolved into the swirl of chaos. I take his form as a convenience, but I'm no more than a puppet. In other words, we didn't want to create a character model for the chaos, so we just reuse Sid's. When a man dies, his soul melts into the chaos. But the idea of it, of him, survives intact. And then he is reborn anew and returns to the living world. I like this concept a lot more when it was called a live stream. An unseen power exists in all of us. It's the chaos that we carry in our hearts. Did this game start out as a Kingdom Hearts spinoff? Because they spend a lot of time on this subject. Not to mention that everyone's heart is apparently made of chaos and they all have a bit of it in them. And Lumina is essentially Lightning's nobody. You could be reborn in the new world. If the Sacred One shows us the way, she is the only one who can tell us what to do. She has the power to guide us into the future where we can live again. The Soul Song will destroy us and make you forget we ever existed. Vanille's power to lead the dead was given to her by Bunavelza with the intention that she would actually destroy all those souls instead of helping them be reborn in the new world. It was kind of a big oversight on Bunavelza's part. He picked someone whose caring personality would naturally lead her to want to save those souls, so he has to trick her into destroying them instead. And why even give her the ability to save them in the first place if his plan is just to destroy them? You don't you don't have to give up. Overcoming your mistakes, that's the key. It doesn't matter how many times you fail, if you succeed in the end. One last speech about not losing hope from hope, and how hope can pull you through any hopeless situation as long as you have hope. The end of the world is a lot like an MMO when they spawn in high-level enemies to kill players all over the game world before the servers shut down forever. But if we forget them, they're gone forever with no hope of coming back. And it works the other way, too. If the soul of a dead person is destroyed, then our memories of that person disappear, too. 
gone from our minds like they never were. Why didn't the Chaos using Sid's form tell Lightning all this when they spoke? It's kind of in the best interest of the Chaos for Lightning to know this. And why did it never occur to Lightning to inform Vanilla the truth until 15 minutes before the end of the world? Aren't you supposed to be on the Order's side? Awfully cocky for Bush League Trunks to assume that after he was considered the savior of a bunch of murdering cultists and tried to make their one belief come true. All of these Order soldiers wait patiently for Lightning and Noel to finish their discussion before attacking. The song was never about bringing peace to the dead. It was about making things easier for the survivors. If they succeed in destroying all those souls, then the living would forget they ever existed. The Order wants to cut them away like a tumor, then we'll be free from the dead weight of the people we used to love. There is a major plot hole with his logic. The Order and Bunavelza want to destroy all the souls of the dead so the surviving humans will forget they ever existed, which will free them of their regrets and guilt. But if Vanil leads the souls to the new world, they would be reborn and live again. So the surviving humans would have their loved ones back and be free to move on with their lives again. The Chaos, which is made up of the souls of the dead, can speak to people. It did so with Lightning not long ago, and Vanille can speak directly to the dead. But not once did the Chaos ever inform Vanille that what she was doing would destroy the souls of the dead, and Vanille never bothered to ask what they wanted. Bunavels' plan to erase the memories of those reborn on his new world by destroying the dead hinge on a simple breakdown in communication. The Soul Song is supposed to help them. If they end up being forgotten, they won't be saved. Sacred One. God has spoken to us and told us his wishes. He demands pure souls with hearts of light. Those who could not survive the long centuries are not part of God's great plan. You just confirmed what they told Vanille. I just want a chance to make up for what I did. So many people died because of me. This inner conflict was resolved back in the first game when Vanille and Fang saved Cocoon. Every character arc has been recycled. They spoke of sadness and regret, but... No matter how much pain they feel, none of them asked to be destroyed. See, had you just asked them what they wanted instead of listening to the order, this wouldn't even be happening right now. <laughs> Weird how the Clavis being destroyed only vaporized the order lady and not Snow, who was the one who destroyed it. You made Lumina. Do you remember? You made a tomb to keep someone's memory safe. Your explanations suck! If you're going to choose a human to be your earthly form, you can do better than hope. Etro is gone and she will never return. The new world needs a new goddess, one who can restore the cycle of death and rebirth. You must become the ruler of chaos. Bunavelza was the god who created Etro, and he plans to make lightning into the new goddess of death to take Etro's place. If he can replace Etro, then it doesn't seem like destroying this world and creating a new one was even necessary. Everything could have been put right by replacing Etro after she was killed by Caius. you are to be my new goddess. And so I prepared you with many trials. Show me your new powers. Let this be your final trial. Bunavelza is right up there with Final Fantasy IX's Necron when it comes to underdeveloped final bosses. Funny, I felt the same emotions through all three of these games. This is the last soul I'll save! Hope! I'll set you free! That fucking knife again? How did Lightning even get her hands on it? This infuriates me more than it should. I was expecting this ending to be nothing but cheese, but even I wasn't prepared for how much cheese it would contain. Lightning also gets in on the recycled character arcs by learning to trust and rely on others, something she had already learned by the end of the first game. I should send this for no one suffocating while in the vacuum of space, but in all honesty, I think these characters have gotten used to living in an environment where all the air has been sucked out by the plot. Odin! You could call on Odin this entire time? Since when? I thought he turned into a chocobo. The rest of the cast show up and summon their idolins too even though they haven't been able to since the first game. And for some reason, Noel has Saz's Eidolon, even though Noel was never able to see. We were looking for something. Hey, you gonna join us? Sarah can come back to life with no explanation other than Saz found her soul. It's amazing how easy finding Sarah's soul was for him, considering he couldn't find his own son's soul after 500 years of searching. You've been defeated by a power that you never understood. A power that you cannot see. It comes from the bonds of love that unite us. Cringe levels are nearing lethal amounts. We don't need God anymore. Someone read way too much Nietzsche before making this game. Oh yeah, there was still one more plot point to clear up. Let's just slap a bow on that by reviving a Yule for Noel, even though we said earlier that Yule couldn't go to the New World since she would infect it with chaos. Caius did a thing, so it's okay now. She is the last of us. Only she can be free. Caius has released her from the fate of the Cirrus. So could Caius have done that at any time he wanted, including back in the last game? That would have solved Yule's reincarnation problem pretty easily. Oh my fucking god, they immigrated to Earth. They couldn't resist ending the series where it all began, with lightning on a train. Normally, that symbolizes the beginning and end of a journey, but this was such an off-the-rails trilogy that tying the games together is nearly impossible. Square hasn't earned that neat and tidy ending for this game. Yes, 
Mr. Frodo. It's over now. 